J class. Our topic for today has something to do still with the human circulatory system. Our focus is on the human heart. Here are the learning objectives for today's discussion. First, familiarize the parts of the human heart. And second, trace the flow of blood in the human heart. But before we move on to the deeper discussion, let's have this think about it question. How emotions affect heart function? So again, this think about it question will motivate you, likewise will challenge you to finish watching this video recorded discussion. So this will give you additional points for your recitation. But for the meantime, what I want you to do is to remember this question. So this will be answered at the end of the discussion. From what you have learned in our previous discussion, heart is the major organ of the human circulatory system for it pumps the blood throughout the body. For today's focus, what we're after is for us to study, learn, and be familiar with the anatomy and physiology of this organ, which is the heart. And to better understand those things, we have to first be mindful about the location of this organ in our body. And heart is located near the center of our chest. Same with lungs. Heart is also being protected by the ribcage. In terms of the size, heart is approximately the same in, in terms of size of a person's fist so when you clench your fist so that gives you an idea about the size of your heart and also heart is hollow and cone shaped organ other than that if we're going to go ahead and look on this illustration you've noticed that the pointed part of this organ is what we know I mean, being called as the apex here, the upper part of the heart where you would see uh, vessels, blood vessels. We call it as the base. So the apex, just to give you uh, a heads up or a, a trivia about this one, this is exactly where one would place a stethoscope. I know you are somewhat familiar with that kind of instrument. That instrument will help you to count the heart rate of a person. So this is where we actually place that instrument. Okay. So here again, your the base of the heart. Here you would see greater vessels that could actually allow the the blood to flow to the rest of the body parts. Now, other than that, you've noticed also from the illustration that the heart is. Uh, composed of entirely muscles, so we have separate discussion for that in this particular video recorded discussion. So later we go ahead and identify those uh, muscles. And here, you've noticed also that the heart, this particular organ, is enclosed uh, in a protective sac called pericardium. So again, this is somewhat same in terms of functionality with the one that covers the, the lungs for the respiratory system. So the pulmonary uh, visceral or the pleura. So that will help the, the organ for this particular one, which is the heart, in terms of having pericardium to lessen the friction once it pumps the blood throughout the body to the nearby organs. So that's the basic information that we that we that could act, we could actually get from the the concept part in terms of location, size, and the outer uh, anatomical parts. Now, from what you've heard earlier, this particular organ is entirely composed of muscle, and this organ, in terms of 
its muscles, it begins to contract before you are born and it stops only when you die. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and identify the, the muscle composition of this particular organ which allows to pump the blood all throughout the body. By merely looking to this illustration, this will give you an idea that this heart in terms of its muscle composition is purely um, made of, of three layers. The, the outer layer is known to be the epicardium. From what you've noticed here, there is no labeled part for that layer of the human heart. But just to give you a heads up, the outer layer is known to be the epicardium. Next layer, which is considered to be the thick uh, layer, the middle layer of the human heart, we call that as myocardium. The one I'm pointing here using my cursor. Now, in this particular layer of the human heart, you would see here cardiac muscle, cardiac muscle cells in particular, which allow uh, the heart to contract as it pumps the blood all throughout the body and moving to the inner part of the heart from outer going to the inner part of the, the this organ you would see another layer this is known to be the innermost layer which is known to be the endocardium talking about its functionality and other things that we have to focus on in terms of the layers of the heart. Epicardium, this serous membrane of smooth outer surface of the heart. This this is uh, purely known to be serous membrane of smooth outer surface of the heart. That's the reason why we call that as the, the outer wall, the outer layer of the human heart. So after pericardium, that's the time that you could see the epicardium. Surface area of a surface layer of the human heart. Now, next to that is the myocardium. As mentioned earlier, middle layer, purely composed of cardiac muscle cell, which responsible purely in terms of contraction. And last, the innermost layer is the endocardium. This is smooth inner surface of heart chambers. So hopefully you have an idea in terms of the layers of the heart. Now, also, in the walls of the heart, uh, two thin layers of epithelial and connective tissue form a sandwich around a muscle cord called the myocardium. So, again, to sum up everything, outer layer, sandwich, uh, it will sandwich your, the, the middle layer, the myocardium, by another layer which is known to be the endocardium. And if we're going to go back to this illustration, you would see that the outer layer is here. Okay. This is just the pericardium. The outer layer is here. Th this layer is the one that protects the heart. A protective layer, as mentioned earlier. Your myocardium and the endocardium. So this is somewhat a sandwich, sandwich-like structure. So again, your myocardium is a powerful layer and if you want to go ahead and look to other reference material powerful contractions of the myocardium pump blood throughout the circulatory system that's the reason why your heart is known to be the major organ for the circulatory system so the question is how does the heart pump blood throughout the body now, the second part of this discussion, that question will be answered now. Now, let's go ahead and take a look on this illustration. So, this illustration will really help us to answer the question, how does the heart pump blood through the body? And this also teaches to trace the flow of blood in the human heart. And lastly, this illustration will teach us and help us to be familiar about the different parts and function of the human heart. Now, let's go ahead and try to focus on this illustration. Now, 
just to give you a heads up, once you look on other reference materials, you would see that the blood as it flows through the human heart is being represented using two colors, blue for the oxygenated blood and red for oxygenated blood. That's the reason why you would see here a uh, colored area in blue, also red area uh, in terms of color for uh, this illustration. Again, the reason why it is blue, not simply because the blood that moves here is really blue in color, but that is just a way to represent that that is the oxygenated and red for oxygenated. Okay? Now, here, you might uh, also hear later some terms that are not same with the labeled parts here because once you look and uh, compare it to other reference materials in biology, you would see that some book used uh, terms that are not same with the other books. Those are just other terms for this particular parts that I'm going to discuss later. Now, this uh, illustration in terms of human heart, you would see that uh, there are two sides, the right side and the left side. And the reason why we have these sides, this is purely due to this part of the human heart. We call it a septum. Here, it is labeled as ventricular septum. But in general, we call it a septum. This part of the human heart separates the, the sides of the heart into two. One for right and one for left. Right is where the oxygenated blood moves. And the left side is where you would actually uh, see that the oxygenated blood moves. Okay? So, again, the reason why we have this septum that separates uh, two sides of the heart, this is purely for eliminating the chance of the blood, the oxygenated and oxygenated to mix together. Okay? Now, other than that, your blood, once you draw a Cartesian plane here, uh, it is composed of four chambered air parts. The upper part is what, is what, is what we call atria. Okay, one atrium here, another atrium here, singular form for that word. Now, lower part of the human heart is what we call uh, ventricle. You have right ventricle and left ventricle. Hopefully, you have and get the main idea for this human heart. Now, other than that, let's try to focus on how blood flows here. And let's try to provide as well the different functions of these parts. So, the blood, still a focus natin, the oxygenated. Now, the blood from the upper part, again, the oxygenated blood from the upper part, it will move here via superior vena cava. So the blood that flows here is deoxygenated. Those blood which lacks in oxygen content, lower part of the body, they move via inferior vena cava. Okay? So the meeting place, this is the area where it receives, okay, area wherein it accepts oxygen poor blood from the body upper part lower far part we call it as right atrium so right atrium accepts oxygen poor blood from the body now you would notice also that there is a structure here we call it as your valve this one also these are valves so in, in this area we call it as Arteriaventricular valve. In other term, in other books, you uh, the name of this area or part of this human heart is known to be your tricuspid valve. Okay, but here in my discussion, I will use the term tricuspid valve. So the oxygenated blood from right atrium it will move once the valve here opens. It will move now next to the right ventricle. Now these valves, all of the valves here. The purpose of this is to still prevent the backflow of the blood. 
from one area to another. Same from what you've learned in our previous discussion in terms of key components of the circulatory system, specifically for veins, right? Now here, the the blood coming from the oxygenated blood coming from right atrium is now on your right ventricle. Your right ventricle is the one that pumps oxygen poor blood to the lungs. Why the blood here in right ventricle must move to the lungs? The answer there is to make it oxygenated. Okay, but prior to that, it will move via pulmonary artery. And if you're gonna recall it again, uh, as mentioned last time, pulmonary artery is the only artery which allow, no, or this is the artery wherein uh, the oxygenated blood flows. Diba you've noticed in general, uh, arteries are uh, allows oxygen rich blood to flow. This is just the only artery na nag allow na ma flow, mag flow yung deoxygenated blood. Okay? So right ventricle pumps deoxygenated blood to move to the lungs for the purpose of making it oxygenated. But prior to that, there is a valve we call it semilunar valve in this illustration but to make it in simple term this is pulmonary valve pulmonary valve so it opens and closes once the blood reaches this area moving to lungs okay that's the time that the blood becomes oxygenated due to the fact that lungs are known to be the major organs for respiration and there are structures in the lungs that could actually allow the process to uh, to be conducted, right? So, hopefully, you don't forget things na dinescas ni sir last time. Now, after the blood becomes oxygenated, it will move na via your pulmonary veins. These pulmonary veins are attached to still to your lungs. So, this is where na this side, the left atrium. It receives oxygenated blood. The main difference between the two atria, the right atrium and the left atrium, is the type of the blood that uh, actually uh, enters this part. Deoxygenated, oxygenated. Now it will move going to your uh, left ventricle, but uh, there is another valve that you can actually see here as pointed by the cursor. We call it as a, a trioventricular valve or in other book, they call it as mitral valve or bicuspid valve. So you would see now na iba-iba yung terms. Okay? But again, we call it as a trioventricular valve, uh, your mitral valve or your bicuspid valve. So, same procedure, same functionality. It opens and closes. It opens and closes once blood reach the, the, the said area. Now, this area, the left ventricle is now the, the area that accepts uh, that, that uh, actually also pumps rather oxygen rich uh, blood to the body but prior uh, for the blood that uh, is known to be rich na in oxygen content bago siya mag move throughout the body it moves first to this aorta okay pero bago yon there is another valve we call it semilunar valve or in other book they call it as aortic valve same functionality now the oxygenated blood will move on the upper part of the body Okay, to the lower part of the body here, you have descending aorta here. So from what you've learned in the previous discussion, types of circulations are your uh, uh, systemic and your pulmonary circulation. Okay, pulmonary circulation that is where your deoxygenated blood becomes oxygenated. Now the the coronary circulation is the one that. Uh, pumps the blood throughout the body except the, the lungs okay this is where actually uh, this is where actually your systemic circulation starts okay to the rest of your body parts okay so hopefully you see the interrelationship na ng two systems your uh, respiratory and circulatory system okay 
So, hopefully, we're clear about this thing. Now, to sum it up, okay, to sum it up, the parts here and the how blood flows in the human heart, it all started upper part of the body deoxygenated, lower part of the body deoxygenated still. This is where they meet. This is the receiving area for the oxygenated blood. Right atrium, move to right ventricle, pump to the lungs, okay, via pulmonary artery. Now, after the blood becomes oxygenated, it will proceed na to your pulmonary veins. As it reaches the left atrium, this is where the oxygenated blood is being received. Moving next to your left ventricle, this is where it, the, 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 your oxygenated blood is being pumped through the rest of the body. Moving to aorta and to the descending aorta here. Okay, that's how your blood flows in the, the human heart. Now, another concept that you have to bear in your mind is that the, the heart, in terms of its outer part, there is what we call coronary arteries. The, the coronary arteries class, to give you a heads up, these arteries, these are arteries that supply oxygen and nutrients to your heart. Kasi nga, heart muscle needs a constant supply of those materials. Pag walang ganon, it will never do its function na magpump ng blood throughout the body. The coronary arteries supply oxygen and nutrients. But, also remember that these arteries, it only provide less amount of oxygen and nutrients compared to the other parts of the body. So, konti lang nare-receive ng heart from the moving oxygenated blood to this particular organ. Okay, but again, still, it is important that the heart receives those materials to do its function. Okay, so again, the the flow of blood in the human heart starts in via superior vena cava, interior, received by right atrium, moving to your uh, right ventricle, moving to the pulmonary artery, going to the lungs. After becomes ox- uh, after the blood becomes oxygenated, it moves via pulmonary veins, reaches left atrium, moving to left ventricle, to aorta, to the rest of the body. The purpose of coronary circulation is to pump oxygenated blood throughout the body and also to make the oxygenated blood becomes oxygenated blood as it enters the lungs. Now, again, to give you the function of this organ, the human heart, remember that it generates blood pressure. So here, as I discussed earlier, the the flow of blood in the human heart, uh, as it contracts, it produces a wave of fluid pressure in the arteries that we call as blood pressure. The normal or typical blood pressure reading for a healthy teen or adult is below 120 over 80. Okay, that's your blood pressure. Now, second is for routing blood. Kaya nga, we trace the flow of blood in the human heart. Ensuring one-way blood flow, that is due to having valves in the human heart. And lastly, it regulates blood supply all throughout the body. And just to add up here, your deoxygenated blood becomes oxygenated blood. And that is being pumped by this organ, your human heart. And as mentioned earlier, there are coronary arteries that could actually supply enough oxygen as well as nutrients to your human heart to continue pumping it. So you would see that here in the outer part of the human heart. This one, the one I'm pointing here in my end using my cursor. Okay, we call it as coronary arteries. Now, let's go back to the think about it question. And the think about it question is how emotions affect heart function. Now, this is the time for you to explain, provide your answer using the comment section below. Type there your explanation so that you can get an additional golden points for your recitation. 
you can actually use things that you've learned from the discussion. Hopefully, you learn a lot for today's discussion. And keep on subscribing to my YouTube channel, like this video, and share it to your other friends.